I'm going to do a quick video on how to use our Digimelts. Um, I'd already just uh, run a couple of things and played with it. So you can see the temperature is ramping down. I had it pretty hot. Um, in order to do a melting point, you have to have uh, basically two pieces of information programmed into the Digimelt. One is the start temperature. And I set this start temperature to 210. Uh, if you push this button and you hold it, eventually it'll start going by fives, or you can push it like this and get it down. So let's pretend we have something that's gonna melt around 220. Um, and typically you start about 10 degrees below. Uh, for known samples that are pure, you can start a few, let me, four or five degrees below. Um, but for samples that you produce in the laboratory, typically you do a little bit uh, further down. Now, uh, once I hit set the start temperature, I can hit start stop and it'll begin to preheat and this will ramp up to uh, the desired temperature. It goes pretty quickly, um, but I'm going to pause it at this point and then we'll come back when it's at that 210. So you notice it's at 208.4, but actually right now it says it's ready to go. Um, the starting temperature is a plateau and eventually we'll get there and sit right at that temperature, uh, but it takes a long time for it to get there. So um, if you're close enough to where you want to be, or maybe you can set it a couple of degrees higher, you can get started right away. Uh, here's a sample tube. It doesn't have anything in it, but I'm just going to show you how you do this. You take the sample tube and you set it in here. Now this area is going to be really hot, okay? And then you'll be looking at your sample tube in here. Now you can't see it because it's clear, but that's it right there, okay? All right, I just took it out. But normally you would just leave it in there. Okay, so now it's at 209.5 and I'm gonna tell it to start. Now you'll notice that there's three buttons here, right? And the three buttons are for storing information of when a sample melts. The other thing that I, I should have set, and I don't know if I talked about this already, but I said it earlier, is the ramp rate. And the ramp rate is typically uh, one degree a minute uh, if you're close to the melting point. And it's typically more than that if you're further from the melting point. So if, if you want to, you can go at two degrees a minute or five degrees. I wouldn't actually recommend 10 or 20 unless you're really scanning and you don't know where it is. But if you really know where it is, then you can go at a half degree to minute per minute. And then some of the melting information that you get will be a little bit more accurate. So now I'm gonna go back. Um, we don't need the ramp time. I'm gonna set it up to one degree a minute. Uh, and again, remember I said, I think my sample's at 100, uh, 220 degrees Celsius. Um, it's going on and heating uh, at one degree a minute. So you can think about that. That'll take 10 minutes to get from there to, to 220. So um, what I'm gonna do then is pretend that I'm at, uh, at the melting point and I'm reading the information by watching in here. And then I have to record this number over here. It's not an easy thing to actually look and write in your notebook and then come back and look. It's, it's kind of uh, necessary to keep your eye on the sample. And so when you see that sweat point that I talked about in the other video, you just click data and it records that number. If you have three samples, then you would do that and do that. And that the L and the C and the R left, center, right is all that means. So now I've recorded a number for each and then I'm going along, and then I see a clear point, let's say. Uh, of course, um, I'm not looking at anything, but just pretend you see a clear point. You can press that again. And then let's say this one's a little bit different, so I'll wait till it goes up, and I'll do that. Now I think it's done, so I can hit start, stop, and it'll begin uh, cooling, and I can go back and review my data now. So there's actually four data points you record. You notice th those are blank. If I come back, that's the first one. That's the second one. If I go back to that's the first one. That's the second. And then it should be blank, and that's the first one, and that's the second. Okay. Again, this is if you're writing multiple samples, or if you don't want to constantly be looking back and forth and writing information down, you can just click this button as you record. Um, now that I've done that, I can 
my start temp and hit that again. That's where the temperature actually is right now. If you wanted to do another one, you could click that button. It would preheat. It would get to the starting temperature. You could pull the old samples out. Actually, we never reuse the melting point samples. And then you could put new uh, samples in. Take the old ones and throw them uh, either in a solid waste container or in the broken glass container.